the Silent Hill franchise. Let me start off by saying I haven't played Silent Hill Homecoming yet, so this is a review of Silent Hill 1 through 4 and the movie. First I'm going to explain what the franchise Silent Hill is, without any spoilers, for people who don't already know. Silent Hill itself is a small town in America, and as you find out in the games, supernatural events occur there. The games are survival horror with elements of adventure. You walk around searching for clues, picking up objects, figuring out where to use these objects and or what to combine them with, and fighting off monsters. These monsters are almost invariably these grotesque, bizarre creatures, and most of the designs on them are fantastic. One of the best things about these games is the atmosphere. Very disturbing and unnerving. This atmosphere is extremely effective, and other than the creatures you fight, there are a couple of other reasons. The most important one is the sound. The music is well composed, and the sound effects are put together with an immense level of precision. There are instances where they use just a single sound to creep you out, and then there are these cacophonies of sound where the tension level really spikes. Now when I use the word cacophony, I want to make one thing completely clear. These games are never noisy. Loud at times, yes, but never noisy. It's never unpleasant to listen to is likely to scare the living daylights out of you, but it's not unpleasant to listen to. And they also know how to use silence really well. The creators of these games have excellent insight into what sound does to people, and what specific type of sound, at what pitch it should be. Every aspect of sound. If I had to compare it to something, I'd say the video in The Ring. The use of images there is akin to the use of sound in the Sound Hill games. Another thing that really adds to the atmosphere are the locations and the solitude. In these games, you're mostly all alone, and the situation seems helpless, like overwhelming, though without discouraging the player. Another reason why these games are so good is that it's psychological horror. They understand that a ton of gore and blood and constant brutal violence aren't scary. You know, you see enough of that, and you get desensitized. And then it stops having an impact on you. You know, currently producers of torture porn are just trying to outdo each other in the goriest, most brutal image and idea. Now that is not to say that there is no blood, violence, or gore in these games. There most certainly is. But it's used extremely well. These games also have rather credible and memorable characters. The storylines are excellent, and the mythology, which all the games gradually add more to, is really good. The graphics are also really, really good. They of course got better as the series went along, you know, years progressed and technologies improved, but all of the games look really good. As far as the first one goes, you do have to take into account when it was made, you know, it's over ten years old by now. Another thing that's great about these games is that for all four games, there are multiple different endings, and based on certain criteria, you'll unlock a specific one. That's it for the general stuff. Here begins my spoiler-free review of Silent Hill. Yeah, it doesn't really have much of a cover, so just show the side. The story has you playing the role of Harry Mason, the widowed father of Cheryl. The two are on their way to Silent Hill for a vacation there, when Harry sees a figure in front of the car, swerves to miss it, and when he wakes up, Cheryl is gone. That's where the game begins, and I'm not going to give you any more of the story, because it is too good for me to just be telling you what it is. Something that's really good about this story, in addition to it being a really good mystery, is the way it's just hinted at. It never stoops to the level of having some character come in and just explain everything that's gone on before the story began and during it. You have to piece it together yourself. Almost immediately you're gonna find a flashlight that fits in the breast pocket and a radio. And when you're walking around Silent Hill, what makes it so creepy and effective, it's so close to being quaint and appealing, but it's not because it is so abandoned. Like when you're walking around a shopping mall and you're one of the last people there, you know. Now to find your way around, you have to use maps, and usually you find a map of an area. 
pretty early on in the area. And what's great is, as you find out what doors you can and can't open, for example, Harry will write that onto the map, so you don't have to be trying the same doors. So whenever you punch up the map screen, you can tell what doors you've tried, where you've been. The puzzles are great, and some of them are pretty tough. The dialogue does bear marks from having been translated from, I think the original was Japanese, but it's not zero wing bad, and it's not, like, tough to follow. They make themselves understood. The voice acting is arguably not great. It's not outright bad, either. It's just not Oscar-worthy. The graphics are dated by now, of course. I'd really say that when comparing this to the other three, what stands out the most is the way the camera is static during dialogue sequences. But with that said, the CGI still looks really good, and it's still very much worth playing. The length is good, and it's got really good replayability value. That's it for the first one. Moving on to Silent Hill 2. The graphics get a big upgrade. This was only two years after the first one came out. And now the mouths and eyes are animated in dialogue sequences. Perhaps not perfectly synced, but it still looks a lot better. In this one, you take on the role of James Sunderland, whose wife has been dead for three years, and he suddenly gets a letter that he's certain is in her handwriting. It's inviting him back to Silent Hill, where they used to go for vacation. The game starts right after he arrives in Silent Hill. And that's all I'm going to tell you about the story. This is more of a psychological story than the first one. I think the first one did a brilliant job of introducing us to this world, and then the second one is more of a story set within this world. Like, the second one could not have been what it was without the first one having been there first. The first one sort of lays down the foundation. It's a lot like with X-Men 1 and X-2. Silent Hill 2 didn't make me love the first one any less. I love them in slightly different ways. They're both really, really good, and in a lot of ways similar to one another, but just different enough. Now, when I say psychological story, I'm not referring to the fact that it's psychological horror. All four games are psychological horror. But where Silent Hill 1 is more of a story that happens to the protagonist, Silent Hill 2 is driven forward by the protagonist. Now, I think that the second one is the shortest of the four, and that probably is because it's a psychological story. Once the story has played out, and when everything is resolved, the game does end. And I would say that that's certainly preferable to it trying to drag out the story. The creatures seem to be more personal also. The creatures also seem to be more personal in this one. This has probably the best characters out of all four games. And the voice acting is quite good as well. The story is brilliant, deep, and to the extent you can say about any supernatural story, credible. People are still talking about what the best interpretation of it all is. There are some adjustments made from the first to the second. The radio gets volume control. A memos feature is added so that you don't have to be sitting with writing hints down as you get them. There may also be some adjusting done to the puzzle system, but I'm not entirely sure. The combat is improved upon a bit. It's now easier to tell exactly what you're aiming at. And there is a sort of target lock feature. One of the first weapons you get is a board with a nail on the business end, and if you play it right, you can actually be running past an enemy and smacking him with it as you pass him. One downside to the changed combat system is that now it seems like it'll offer you to attack even if you haven't pressed the ready weapon button, but if you do press attack, it's, it's difficult to explain, but it doesn't really work properly. At least that's been my experience. I could be doing it wrong. In any event, it doesn't stop me from considering this an excellent follow-up to the first.